So, recently in Oshinoko, Kana and Ruby's relationship has completely fallen apart. This is mainly because of Ruby's own struggle to truly understand Ai and Kana decide to help in her own way. A self-sacrificial choice at first, but it has begun to seem like there is more to that decision. However, let's go back a bit. You see, the seeds of Kana's hatred were planted long before she made the choice to help Ruby. Kana has always had the desire to be great at acting. As a popular child actor, Kana loved when the spotlight was on her alone, and when she was praised as a genius. Her mother loved that too, and when her popularity started to drop, her mother grew concerned. Very concerned to the point, she'd do outrageous things, like insist Kana's screen time be increased, and would even take out her anger on Kana herself. Kana's mom loved the popular Kana, which drove Kana to survive in this cruel entertainment industry. When we first saw a child Kana, she was clearly hard to get along with. The thing is, Kana would have been long gone if not for Kid Aqua humbling her and Gotanda himself telling her to get along with others if she wanted to survive a long time in the industry. Because of those words, Kana forced herself to swallow everything she was displeased with. Rather than forcibly taking over, she learned to match the performances of others to survive. Kana made herself believe she didn't want to be the one shining above everyone else. Kana was forced to believe if she could do as she pleased, she'd cause everyone trouble. She held herself back to survive. Yet the moment Aqua forced the spotlight solely on Kana in the Tokyo Blade performance, everything changed and the real Kana was displayed to the world once again. There is no better way to describe it besides saying Kana flat out stole the entire show with all eyes on her. It's no coincidence that this type of dazzling performance is what originally gave Kana a household name. Her unrestrained performance forced everyone to look at her. That's when Kana is at her best. You simply cannot look away from her dazzling display. Even Akane, perhaps someone you could call a rival, could not help but fangirl. Everyone there saw the real Kana act, especially Aqua. The true Kana wants to be in the spotlight. She wants everyone to watch her and her alone. When Kana says she felt the same way as Ruby when it comes to acting, she is a lion. She really wanted her acting to be amazing. Yet, like I explained, Kana is at her full potential whenever she can have the spotlight on herself. We can see glimpses of Kana realizing being an idol in Bikomachi might not be what's best for her. Like when Shun's sister basically got cancelled and Ruby said they could recruit her. Kana was concerned as soon as she suggested that. She thought they might have to fight for fans. Kana doesn't like where this is going. Even though they were gaining rapid success, she knows it's because of Ruby. Because of that, Kana wasn't able to secure work for herself. Her only job then was basically when she is on set with Ruby. Just an extra. Kana questions if that's something she even wants to be, Ruby's extra. Kana even questions why she even became an idol in the first place. If it's not clear already, Kana now realizes she does not want to be stuck in Ruby's shadow. It gets to the point where Kana goes to a shady bar to drink just for a chance to meet up with a well-known director. Like look how dark her eyes are when she tells that director she's just Ruby's extra and has nothing. Then as we know, that led to her getting caught in a little scandal. In order for Kana to be saved, there were certain things that had to happen. First, Memcha reminded Aqua that Kana became an idol for him. She walked this path specifically because Aqua was the one who asked her to do so. Of course, since Aqua wants what's best for Kana, he didn't want anything to do with her. However, this leads to Aqua asking Ruby, even if it were a painful choice and it hurts, if there is a way to save Kana, does she want to save her? And you know how Ruby answers? She says, isn't it obvious? She's my friend after all. No matter what it cost, Ruby was willing to save Kana because she's her friend. At least, that's what Ruby thought before she saw their secret of being Ai's children was exchanged to protect Kana. To say Ruby was furious at Aqua for leaking the information will be an understatement. Ruby even said she couldn't see Aqua's family anymore before leaving Aqua to pick up the pieces and reveal that this is all for Ruby to live on even after he's gone. Very ominous. But you see, they saved Kana, but paid a very steep price. Ai's reputation, which Ruby very clearly cares about. And this is how Kana repays her. By telling Ruby to her face, she wishes Ruby could just go away. That Ruby should just disappear already. Even if Kana didn't completely mean that, just imagine how much this is hurting Ruby. She genuinely cared about Kana, and even led Aqua to reveal Ai's secret because of her. It's truly tragic, but it should be clear by now this has been building up for a while. 
Of course, it definitely ramped up because of the 15 year line movie. Specifically, this may have all been part of Aqua's plan. Now let me explain. You see, back in chapter 117, when Kana is talking to Aqua about leaving Bikomachi, they also talk about lesser pandas and compare it to the entertainment industry. Lesser means inferior, and Kana states that those who are popular take everything. They monetize fame and propriety. Is she potentially talking about Ruby? She goes on to say you're labeled as lesser if you're not popular. It's the fate of performers who aren't crowd pullers, as Aqua puts it. However, Kana is certain she will win this bet and become a fine giant panda, and won't let them call her lesser anymore. As Aqua watches her closely, Kana then mentions she got an offer for a role. The role of the old Bikomachi member, who hates Ai so much, Nino herself. But you know what? Kana asks Aqua if it's okay for her to take the role. And of all things Aqua chooses to say, he tells Kana if it's her, he doesn't mind. Kana wonders why that is, and Aqua tells her it's because she's special to him. Of course, Kana freaks out when she hears that, but the key thing is, that's enough to convince Kana to take the role. It's pretty clear Aqua wanted Kana to have the role of Nino for some reason, and now we may know why. After all, this mastermind starts laughing like crazy, and literally says she's so easy to manipulate. So now it's clear Aqua wanted Kana to take on the role of the Eye Hater, which would deliberately put her in conflict with Ruby, who's playing Eye. But why would he do this? Well, let's get back to Kana and the role Nino plays in all this. In chapter 132, we see Kana sharing the stage with Ruby again during filming. When the fans come to take photos, they go straight to Ruby as Ai, and then Akane also jumps into the scene as well, saying Ai can't do anything without her. It's like Kana's completely ignored. From the start of the chapter, it's made immediately clear Kana is actually a bit envious. And not just with Ruby, but Akane as well. This goes back to Kana needing the spotlight, with her literally saying for them to not take what belongs to her too. Then later on in the same chapter, Kana actually goes to ask Nino for something that could help her study for the role. She even points out how Akane is amazing at studying the character she's playing. Kana does not want to lose to Akane as well. And so, this is where Nino reveals her true feelings about Ai. How much she loved and hated her to the point of saying she wished for Ai to disappear. Ruby then comes over to ask if Nino regrets it. Nino says she does, but then Ruby says she doesn't care about that anymore. And that's when Nino explains how Ruby can't be I, and the I would never say anything like that. Nino may have seemed completely delusional as she stormed off, but those words will leave a lasting impact on both Ruby and Kana. Even Kana being freaked out by Nino's psycho behavior is a bit ironic considering how she tries to become more like Nino in the following chapters. Of course, part of that is due to Ruby really taking Nino's words seriously and becoming frustrated because she can't understand I. Ruby explains to Kana why she wants to understand I so much, which leads to Kana forcing Ruby to feel the same pain I did by saying she hates her. However, not everything Kana says is a lie to make it seem like she hates Ruby. There's truth behind her words. We now know Kana has always felt some type of way of being in Ruby's shadow and being unable to surpass Ruby. Like how Kana tried to do her own thing because Ruby was taking all the spotlight. And of course, how they're all just extras for Ruby, just there to make her look better. Those are all things Kana has expressed earlier in the story. Kana knows Ruby wants to understand her mother and perform well. That's something Kana went through as well with her own mother. So all that buildup of Kana not liking the situation she was in and needing the spotlight for herself has culminated in this moment. On one hand, Kana is doing this to help Ruby understand the despair I must have felt, while at the same time revealing how she truly feels. She held it in for so long, but her jealousy is definitely real. So real in fact that getting into the role of Nino is enhancing those feelings to the extreme. Kana tells Memcho that after bottling up those feelings for so long, she realizes how much she has been holding back now that they're out. It's to the point where Kana is saying she even wants Ruby to get hurt because of her. Now she understands this feeling of love and hate. It's clear that fully committed to the role of Nino is affecting Kana's mindset. It's an example of someone really getting into a role which affects their feelings in real life until it's over. Something that Frill mentioned earlier in the chapter. But something like that, where an actor can find another person within themselves, can become a game changer for a movie. I believe that's what we're seeing with Kana here, and it's exactly what Akko wanted. We know Akko cares about Kana, so now, with Kana finally deciding to own her role completely, she won't be holding back with her performance. Yet, by putting Kana in conflict with Ruby, it is also forcing Ruby to grow exponentially as an actor as well. 
Essentially, Aqua and Short kinda got this role to push Ruby to become a great eye by simultaneously putting Kana in the position to give a stellar performance when she became consumed by her role. He most definitely knew how Kana was feeling and that the role of Nino would be perfect for her as well. And we also can't forget about Akane. Although it hasn't been shown yet, I'm certain that Akane will push herself to another level as well when she knows how much Kana is popping off with her own role. With that in mind, it's likely Aqua's and Shore, the girls he cares about, will be able to put on an unforgettable performance to advance their careers to new heights while also accomplishing his own goal of catching Akaru. This way, as Aqua said, even once he's gone, Ruby and everyone else he cares about will still be able to live on in this world. With all that said, I don't think Kana has necessarily gone overboard with her hatred towards Ruby. Yes, from Ruby's perspective, Kana's actions seem cruel, especially after I Secret was exposed for her sake. However, even though Kana may believe she truly despises Ruby now and wants her to suffer, this will certainly benefit Ruby in the end. It's been very subtly hinted at throughout the story, but deep down, Kana knows she needs the spotlight as well. But at least with this method, both of them will be able to shine brightly in their own roles. Which is also what I think Aqua was hoping for as well. I also thought it was interesting that Kana will be playing the secondary antagonistic character and possible partner of Aqua who's playing Akaru. Both of them care for Ruby, but have goals they're so focused on that they'd sacrifice everything for it. Aqua with revenge and Kana with being an actor. And with Ruby playing I, I feel like there's an interesting parallel that can be made here. But what do y'all think? After everything I've stated in this video, do y'all think Kana went too far and do you think that this has all been a part of Aqua's master plan? Let me know in the comments down below and as always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please drop a like and subscribe. I got some more Oceanical content here too, you can check out. Peace.